your man is out here stinking up the joint, like like dumps the juice. I don't know if I should try to trade him or if I should order a deep cleaning for my roster. We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. Here are the top five waiver wire targets you need to focus on for week four of the NBA season. Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is just rostered in 14.2% of ESPN leagues and 35% of Yahoo leagues. Tyler Hero is out and Kyle Lowry is a proven champion. When he gets the minutes, he produces. The issue is, is that his best days are way, way behind him. However, in the short term, he does have fantasy value. So I would encourage you, if he's available on your waiver wire, I would think about grabbing him. Over the last seven days, he's averaged 31.3 minutes per game, 8.3 points, six rebounds per game, seven assists, and 1.3 steals. If you need a replacement for your hero, get yourself some Kyle's Lowry's season salt. From the Indiana Pacers, Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith is just rostered in 7.1% of ESPN leagues and 26% of Yahoo leagues. He's averaging 11.9 points per game on the season and 6.9 boards. He's also shooting 71.7% from the field. All of this, pay attention to this, y'all. All of this in just 18 minutes. Just 18 minutes. Come on, man. He's ranked inside the top 100 in per game fantasy value. And also, this past Wednesday, he actually put up 16 points, 11 rebounds, one assist, two steals, and a block. He is stuffing the stat sheet all over the place. Grab yourself some Jalen, and you won't be failing. Speaking of Jalen, let's talk about Jalen Suggs. He's just rostered in 17.9% of ESPN leagues. And yo, this week he blew my mind. I was actually covering one of these games for NBC Sports and I was like, what the heck is happening? Your man has seven steals in one game. Fantasy goal mine. He's averaging 27.3 minutes per game, 13.3 points, four rebounds, 4.3 assists, 2.7 2.7 steals. Get yourself some Jalen Suggs. Kelly Olenek. With Walker Kessler banged up, there's going to be some opportunity for your man to really take advantage of Kessler's absence. Over the last seven days, he's averaged 20.7 minutes per game, 5.7 points, 5.3 rebounds, three assists, 0.3 steals, blasey blasey. So his numbers are not sexy right now. But what's what's a really telling, telling detail is that he's already getting 20.7 minutes per game. So with Kessler's absence, you're going to see that go up. If he's available on your waiver, put some Destiny's Child on because I don't think you're ready for this, Kelly. From the Pelicans, I got two players for you. So I'm going to give you a two for one. Jordan Hawkins. Jordan Hawkins is just rostered in 7.6% of ESPN leagues. Over the last seven days, he's averaged 30.7 minutes per game, 20 points per game, come on now, 4.3 rebounds, 1.3 assists, and 0.7 steals. The second part of this two-for-one is Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels is just rostered in 2.5% of ESPN leagues. Over the last seven days, he's averaged 24.7 minutes per game, 7.7 points, 2.7 rebounds, 3 0.7 0.7 assists and two steals per game. So both of these players with CJ McCollum being out and he's out for a serious thing, y'all. It's some kind of lung situation. So we hope that everything is all right with CJ. But this opens up a runway for these two young players. Look for them to compete over the next couple of weeks to really see who stakes a claim to that starting role and gets the most minutes. But if they're available, I would grab both of them. Like I would scoop them up quick because you're going to get yourself a two-headed Pelican. As always, I got a couple waiver wire bonus targets for you. Marcus Sasser, Lonnie Walker, Bismack Biombo, Killian Hayes, Keontae George, and Drew Hubanks. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. The last of the major pro sports leagues is off and rolling, and college basketball is ready to go as well. Bet Online remains your top spot for all your live betting action and contests. NFL, 
college football, UFC, and NHL are in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action, along with every sport available at your fingertips, with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today, and remember, use the promo code Believe for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Here are the top five buy low targets you need to focus on for Week Four of the NBA season. Carl Anthony Towns. Now, I've been somebody on the record. I've been high on Carl Anthony Towns, like Cheech and Chong method man high on Carl Anthony Towns. I was like, yo, your man is dropping to the third round. What's happening? Like a couple of years ago, he was considered one of the top five guys in fantasy. For Dynasty, he was arguably in the top three. It's amazing how much can change with just a couple of years. Now we're sitting here looking at him with his value declining at a rapid pace. So if you have a league mate who's panicking about Cat, this could be your opportunity to buy low. Just remember one thing. Cats always land on their feet. Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam is somebody I was lower than most fantasy basketball analysts on this offseason. I was like, stay away from him. We had people in the comments section going off on me because I had him ranked about seven to 10 spots below where everyone else had him. And the reason was is because I thought there would be another player to take the leap in Toronto. Honestly, I thought it was OG Ananobi. I was wrong there. It ended up being Scotty Barnes, but more on him later. Listen, this is the thing you want to know about Siakam. He's not going to be this bad. Somebody in your league is like, yo, I don't believe I got this hot hot dog water on, on my daggone roster. I got to clean this up. I got to get him out of here. This is your opportunity. Send a couple offers. See if you can start low and then move up from there. But guarantee you he's going to do better than what he's doing right now. Another player that I was not high on in the offseason, Jordan Poole. People thought Jordan Poole was going to land in Washington and become like the new Steph Curry. Honestly, he's he's been okay, but he's never been like a 25, 30-point guy. He's never been the primary scorer just in short periods of time due to injuries, but he's never carried a team. So for that reason, I had him way lower than most. Listen, it's not to brag. When we get it right, we get it right. When we get it wrong, we get it wrong. I do both, but he is not this bad, people. Jordan Poole does not stink this bad. He is going to bounce back. I don't know if he's he's going to meet the value that people had him at before the season started, but he won't be this bad. Take a risk, jump into the deep end, and make a splash with Jordan Poole. Zach Levine. Zach Levine is one of my favorite fantasy basketball players. And over the years, he's had some ups and downs, but for the most part, he's been a really solid fantasy contributor. This season, it's been all over the place. Like, honestly, I had concerns about him going into the season, so I didn't prioritize him in my drafts, and I'm happy that I stayed away from that. But people are like, yo, should I drop Zach Levine? Should you what? Should you drop Zach Levine? Are you, what, 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 what? And come on, man, we can't be there, right? It's not that kind of party where people are considering dropping Zach Levine. So if you're in a smaller league, eight man, 10 man, there's probably a league manager that's like, I don't want to live with this. This is not for me. This is not what I want. This is your opportunity to see if you can create a package to bring Zach Levine back to your squad. Julius Randle. Julius Randle is not my favorite fantasy basketball player. Honestly, I have been low on him for years and years. Over the last couple years, though, especially like since Jalen Brunson got in the mix, things have been a little different, right? And it looks like, yo, Randall might be that guy. So what do I do? This offseason, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to believe in Randall. And you know what happened? It turned into a scandal. I ended up putting him higher than I've normally put him. I was kind of online and on par with where most people were in the fantasy community in terms of analysts. I was like right in that area. But boy, were we wrong. This man has been whew, putrid. I'm talking about like a bag of farts. It is no 
fun at all. With that being said, this is an opportunity. He won't be this bad. This season, he's averaging uh, 16.5 points per game, 11.1 rebounds, 4.9 assists, and he's doing 34 minutes a game. He's, he's averaging 34 minutes a game. So he's getting on the floor. He's still a starter. He was an all-star recently. Come on, man. He can't be this bad. What I'm saying is find that manager in your league. Help them to like magnify the narrative and see if you can bring Randall back to the team. Here are the top five sell highs you need to pay attention to for week four of the NBA season. Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma is not this good. If he is and like it works out where it's sustainable, then I'll raise my hand and be like, I'm wrong. But I, I don't think this can last. Your man is shooting 50, 35, and 80, y'all. This is not sustainable. Like, it's out of control. I think it will settle down a little bit. But while he's hot, this is your opportunity to see if you can get back a high return on Kyle Kuzma. Derek White. Derek White is somebody that in the offseason, once the big trade happened with Lillard and Drew Holiday and all of that, People were like, oh, my God, there it goes. They threw their notebook in the air. They were like, man, Derek White is, he's going to be bottom of the barrel now. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm writing him off. But your man has carved out a decent role for himself, and I would even say has gone beyond expectations. He's averaging 64.7% from the field right now. He's shooting, I should say, he's shooting 64.7% from the field. He's shooting 57.9% from three-point land. This is not sustainable. This won't last. So if you have him on your roster, try to move him and see if you can get more for what you paid for Derek White. From the Portland Trailblazers, Shaden Sharp. Shaden Sharp is a young beast. Like, no joke. I agree that the man could play basketball and he's going to have a bright future ahead of him. But... There's one factor to take into consideration in this equation. There's a key piece missing. Anthony Simons hasn't been healthy. He hasn't been playing. So there's going to be some regression when he returns to the lineup. So this is your chance. While Shaden Sharp is hot, see if you can get yourself a top 70, a top 80 type player and go ahead and start a deal to move him off your squad before he cools down. Chet Holmgren. Listen, I love Chet. And I, honestly, I, I wouldn't trade Chet if I had, if like I have him on some of my rosters and I would not recommend in normal settings for people to trade Chet. If somebody asks me like, hey, who would you trade for this? Like I wouldn't do it, but I gotta be real with you. What he's doing this season is out of this world, specifically with the blocks, people. He is blocking shots. It's like a dagger. It's the Dave Chappelle block party. The way he's like, pew, pew. Like, it's no joke. People were so high on Wimby, but Chet went a lot lower and is providing similar value. With that said, I would not trade him unless you can get yourself like a top 25, top 30 type player. So Chet, I would, I would put him on the block if you're open to it. Me personally, I have him in a couple of my leagues, especially two of my dynasty leagues. I ain't trading him for nothing because I am like not going to be here two years later shedding tears because I traded Dagon Chet Holmgren. From the Toronto Raptors, Scotty Barnes. Oh my goodness. Like this guy is out of this world. I told you earlier on that I was looking at OG Ananobi. I was like, yo, this is the season. Fred Van Vliet is gone. Somebody going to pick up the slack. It sure as heck ain't, it ain't going to be Pascal Siakam. I knew it wasn't going to be Pascal Siakam. I didn't think it was going to be Scotty Barnes either, y'all. But it is. He is him. Like, with a capital H, he is him. If you drafted him, you took the top off. Boobies is out. Hair blowing. In the wind. Convertible. Yo, Scotty Barnes has been so good, but he's not this good. One thing you want to keep in mind, he is averaging 2.1 blocks per game. You want to know how many blocks he averaged last season? 0.8. Not even one block a game. That little stat 
is huge when you think about fantasy basketball value. Especially in a points league where blocks are weighted so much heavily in most um, scoring settings. You got to keep that in mind, right? So if you could get you, like, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, I would package him for, like, the Joker. I'd be like, yo, you and Scotty Barnes the future, man. I throw you Scotty Barnes, boom, boom, Kyle Kuzma, let me get the Joker. <laughs> and I, I don't know if someone would make that deal, but that's how I would be thinking about Scotty Barnes. See if you can go get the player that you want. The player that you wanted to draft for your team, you want an SGA, use Scotty Barnes in another piece. What? You wanted Tyrese Halliburton, you Scotty Barnes in another piece. What? I'm just saying. Anything is possible, like my man Kevin Garnett said. Now let's open up the Believe in Fantasy Basketball mailbag. Just remember, these questions are questions that you might have as well. So I love this part of the show. First up, this one is from my man, Ari Yu. He says, what is a good player that I can get for Gordon Hayward now that the ceiling is high? So listen. Gordon Hayward used to be really good. Then he was really bad. Then he was injured. And it's up and down. It's a roller coaster. Right now, he is putting up some crazy numbers. A player that I will be trying to get for Gordon Hayward is Asar Thompson. I don't know if they'll come off Asar Thompson, but the thing that I always talk about in fantasy is you want to think about youth and upside. A player like Gordon Hayward, what you're getting from him is his best. Excuse me. What you're getting from him is his best. Asar, we haven't even seen his best yet. We don't even know what he's capable of. So for me, that's the type of player I would target. Next up is from Karma. Karma says, I'm trying to trade Wiggins. Who should I be looking at? You trying to trade Wiggins? Who, sh who, sh who should you be looking at? You need to start by looking in the mirror, man. I'm sorry, man. And I, and I got, you know, I got love for all of our community, Karma. But man, if you got Wiggins and you trying to trade him now, you got to look at the man in the mirror. Going to make the change. Forwards in my... That's a Michael Jackson song. Sorry. Listen, you cannot move Wiggins right now because you're going to get pennies on the dollar. If you want to get pennies on the dollar, you can get whoever you want. The bottom, you know, two or three players on your league mates team if you want to. But what I would recommend is wait. Hold steady. If you can, if you start taking L's and you got to drop Andrew Wiggins or like offer like take some garbage back for him, then that's cool too. But right now, if you're able to, I would see if you can ride out the storm, see if he has a big game, then you try to sell high. But we never, ever, 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 ever sell low. You never want to sell the player when they're stinking up the joint. You want to sell, sell them when they're thriving. The next one is from Spody Odie Dopalicious, who was the winner of our Josh Giddy card giveaway on TikTok. I believe you were there. So big shout out to you. Uh, he says, who wins? Giannis, Brogdon, and Wendell Carter Jr. for Jokic. Giannis, Brogdon, and Carter for Jokic. I say Jokic side. And the reason I say that is because I think Brogdon and Wendell Carter Jr., although they have some fantasy value, we're talking about the Joker. I can find two guys off the waiver wire to fig figure out what happens when I lose Carter and Brogdon. But Giannis or Jokic, I'm going to give you the daggone Joker. I mean, I I'm going to take the daggone Joker every day all day, and tomorrow. Now that you're prepared to dominate week four, check out our episode about how to play Dynasty Fantasy Basketball. This episode was presented to you by Bet Online, where the game starts.